Venus is the second planet from the sun and is named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty. As the brightest natural object in Earth's night sky after the moon, Venice can cast shadows and can be visible to the naked eye in broad daylight. Venice's orbit is smaller than that of Earth, but its maximal elongation is 47. Thus, at latitudes with a day-night cycle, it is most readily visible for up to a few hours following the start of sunset or before sunrise. At times, it has been seen in a completely dark sky. Venice orbits the sun every 224.7 Earth days. It has a synodic day length of 117 Earth days and a sidereal rotation period of 243 Earth days. Consequently, it takes longer to rotate about its axis than any other planet in the solar system, and does so in the opposite direction to all but Uranus. This means that the sun rises from its western horizon and sets in its east. Venice does not have any moons, a distinction it shares only with Mercury among the planets in the solar system. The third smallest planet in the solar system, Venice is a terrestrial planet and is sometimes called Earth's sister planet because of their similar size, mass, proximity to the sun, and bulk composition. It is radically different from Earth in other respects. It has the densest atmosphere of the four terrestrial planets, consisting of more than 96 carbon dioxide. The atmospheric pressure at the planet's surface is about 92 times the sea level pressure of Earth, or roughly the pressure at 900 meters 3,000 feet underwater on Earth. Even though Mercury is closer to the Sun, Venice has the hottest surface of any planet in the solar system, with a mean temperature of 737 kelvins 464 grad Celsius. 867 grad Fahrenheit. Venice is shrouded by an opaque layer of highly reflective clouds of sulfuric acid, preventing its surface from being seen from Earth in light. It may have had water oceans in the past, but after these evaporated the temperature rose under a runaway greenhouse effect. The water has probably photodissociated, and the free hydrogen has been swept into interplanetary space by the solar wind because of the lack of a planetary magnetic field. Because of the lethal surface conditions, the planet is sometimes referred to as Earth's evil twin. As one of the brightest objects in the sky, Venice has been a major fixture in human culture for as long as records have existed. It has been made sacred to gods of many cultures and has been a prime inspiration for writers and poets as the morning star and evening star. Venice was the first planet to have its motions plotted across the sky as early as the second millennium C. Its proximity to Earth has made Venice a prime target for early interplanetary exploration. It was the first planet beyond Earth visited by a spacecraft Venera 1 in 1961 and the first to be successfully landed on by Venera 7 in 1970. The planet's thick clouds render observation of its surface impossible in the visible spectrum, and the first detailed maps did not emerge until the arrival of the Magellan Orbiter in 1991. Plans have been proposed for rovers or more complex missions, but they are hindered by Venice's hostile surface conditions. The possibility of life on Venice has long been a topic of speculation, in recent years, the topic has received active research. Venice is one of the four terrestrial planets in the solar system, meaning that it is a rocky body like Earth. It is similar to Earth in size and mass and is often described as Earth's sister or twin. The diameter of Venice is 12,000, 103.6 kilometers, 7,520.8 miles, only 638.4 kilometers, 396.7 miles less than Earth's sand, its mass is 81.5 of Earth. Conditions on the Venusian surface differ radically from those on Earth because its dense atmosphere is 96.5 carbon dioxide, with most of the remaining 3.5 being nitrogen. The surface pressure is 9.3 megapascals, 93 bars and the average surface temperature is 737 kelvins, 464 grad Celsius, 867 grad Fahrenheit, 
above the critical points of both major constituents and making the surface atmosphere a supercritical fluid. Venice has an extremely dense atmosphere composed of 96.5 carbon dioxide, 3.5 nitrogen both exist as supercritical fluids at the planet's surface and traces of other gases including sulfur dioxide. The mass of its atmosphere is 92 times that of Earth, whereas the pressure at its surface is about 93 times that at Earth's uh, pressure equivalent to that at a depth of nearly 1 km 58 miles under Earth oceans. The density at the surface is 65 kg and 34.1 pounds skew feet, 6.5 that of water or 50 times as dense as Earth's atmosphere at 293 kelvins 20 grad Celsius, 68 grad Fahrenheit at sea level. The Katu rich atmosphere generates the strongest greenhouse effect in the solar system creating surface temperatures of at least 735 kelvins 462 grad Celsius 864 grad Fahrenheit. This makes the Venusian surface hotter than Mercury's, which has a minimum surface temperature of 53 kelvins, 220 grad Celsius, 364 grad Fahrenheit, and maximum surface temperature of 700 kelvins, 427 grad Celsius, 801 grad Fahrenheit. Even though Venice is nearly twice Mercury's distance from the Sun and thus receives only 25 of Mercury's solar irradiance. Because of its runaway greenhouse effect, Venice has been identified by scientists such as Carl Sagan as a warning and research object linked to climate change on Earth. Venice's atmosphere is extremely rich in primordial noble gases compared to that of Earth. This enrichment indicates an early divergence from Earth in evolution. An unusually large comet impact or accretion of a more massive primary atmosphere from solar nebula have been proposed to explain the enrichment. However, the atmosphere is also depleted of radiogenic argon, a proxy to mantle degassing, suggesting an early shutdown of major magmatism. Studies have suggested that billions of years ago, Venice's atmosphere could have been much more like the one surrounding the early Earth and that there may have been substantial quantities of liquid water on the surface. After a period of 600 million to several billion years, solar forcing from rising luminosity of the sun caused the evaporation of the original water. A runaway greenhouse effect was created once a critical level of greenhouse gases including water was added to its atmosphere. Although the surface conditions on Venice are no longer hospitable to any Earth-like life that may have formed before this event, there is speculation on the possibility that life exists in the upper cloud layers of Venice, 50 kilometers 30 miles up from the surface, where the temperature ranges between 303 and 353 kelvins 30 and 80 grad Celsius, 86 and 176 grad Fahrenheit, but the environment is acidic. The putative detection of an absorption line of phosphine in Venice's atmosphere, with no known pathway for abiotic production, led to speculation in September 2020 that there could be extant life currently present in the atmosphere. Later research attributed the spectroscopic signal that was interpreted as phosphine to sulfur dioxide, or found that in fact there was no absorption line. Thermal inertia and the transfer of heat by winds in the lower atmosphere mean that the temperature of Venice's surface does not vary significantly between the planet's two hemispheres, those facing and not facing the sun, despite Venice's extremely slow rotation. Winds at the surface are slow, moving at a few kilometers per hour, but because of the high density of the atmosphere at the surface, they exert a significant amount of force against obstructions, and transport dust and small stones across the surface. This alone would make it difficult for a human to walk through, even without the heat, pressure, and lack of oxygen. Above the dense Katu layer are thick clouds, consisting mainly of sulfuric acid, which is formed by sulfur dioxide and water through a chemical reaction resulting in sulfuric acid hydrate. Additionally, the atmosphere consists of approximately one ferric chloride. Other possible constituents of the cloud particles are ferric sulfate, aluminum chloride, and phosphoric anhydride. 
Clouds at different levels have different compositions and particle size distributions. These clouds reflect and scatter about 90 of the sunlight that falls on them back into space and prevent visual observation of Venice's surface. The permanent cloud cover means that although Venice is closer than Earth to the sun, it receives less sunlight on the ground. Strong 300 kilometers per hour, 185 miles per hour winds at the cloud tops go around Venice about every four to five Earth days. Winds on Venice move at up to 60 times the speed of its rotation, whereas Earth's fastest winds are only 1020 rotation speed. The surface of Venice is effectively isothermal. It retains a constant temperature not only between the two hemispheres but between the equator and the poles. Venice's minute axial tilt less than 3, compared to 23, on Earth also minimizes seasonal temperature variation. Altitude is one of the few factors that affect Venusian temperature. The highest point on Venice, Maxwell Mons, is therefore the coolest point on Venice, with a temperature of about 655 kelvins, 380 grad Celsius, 715 grad Fahrenheit, and an atmospheric pressure of about 4.5 Pa 45 bar. In 1995, the Magellan spacecraft imaged a highly reflective substance at the tops of the highest mountain peaks that bore a strong resemblance to terrestrial snow. This substance likely formed from a similar process to snow, albeit at a far higher temperature. Too volatile to condense on the surface, it rose in gaseous form to higher elevations where it is cooler and could precipitate. The identity of this substance is not known with certainty, but speculation has ranged from elemental tellurium to lead sulfide galena. Although Venice has no seasons as such, in 2019, astronomers identified a cyclical variation in sunlight absorption by the atmosphere, possibly caused by opaque, absorbing particles suspended in the upper clouds. The variation causes observed changes in the speed of Venice's zonal winds and appears to rise and fall in time with the sun's 11-year sunspot cycle. The existence of lightning in the atmosphere of Venice has been controversial since the first suspected bursts were detected by the Soviet Venera probes. In 2006-07, Venice Express clearly detected Whistler mode waves, the signatures of lightning. Their intermittent appearance indicates a pattern associated with weather activity. According to these measurements, the lightning rate is at least half of that on Earth, however other instruments have not detected lightning at all. The origin of any lightning remains unclear, but could originate from the clouds or volcanoes. In 2007, Venice Express discovered that a huge double atmospheric vortex exists at the South Pole. Venice Express also discovered in 2011 that an ozone layer exists high in the atmosphere of Venice. On 29 January 2013, ESA scientists reported that the ionosphere of Venice streams outwards in a manner similar to the ion tail seen streaming from a comet under similar conditions. In December 2015, and to a lesser extent in April and May 2016, Researchers working on Japan's Akatsuki mission observed both shapes in the atmosphere of Venice. This was considered direct evidence of the existence of perhaps the largest stationary gravity waves in the solar system. The Venusian surface was a subject of speculation until some of its secrets were revealed by planetary science in the 20th century. Venera landers in 1975 and 1982 returned images of a surface covered in sediment and relatively angular rocks. The surface was mapped in detail by Magellan in 1991. The ground shows evidence of extensive volcanism, and the sulfur in the atmosphere may indicate that there have been recent eruptions. About 80 of the Venusian surface is covered by smooth, volcanic plains, consisting of 70 planes with wrinkle ridges and 10 smooth, or lobate planes. Two highland continents make up the rest of its surface area, one lying in the plain its northern hemisphere and the other just south of the equator. The northern continent is called Ishtar Terra after Ishtar, the Babylonian goddess of love, and is about the size of Australia. Maxwell Mons, the highest mountain on Venice, 
lies on Ishtar Terra. Its peak is 11 kilometers, 7 miles above the Venusian average surface elevation. The southern continent is called Aphrodite Terra, after the Greek goddess of love, and is the larger of the two highland regions at roughly the size of South America. A network of fractures and faults covers much of this area. The absence of evidence of lava flow accompanying any of the visible calderas remains an enigma. The planet has few impact craters, demonstrating that the surface is relatively young, at 300-600 million years old. Venice has some unique surface features in addition to the impact craters, mountains, and valleys commonly found on rocky planets. Among these are flat-topped volcanic features called phara, which look somewhat like pancakes and range in size from 20 to 50 kilometers 12 to 31 miles across and from 100 to 1,000 meters, 330 to 3,000 to 280 feet high. Radial, star-like fracture systems called NOVA. Features with both radial and concentric fractures resembling spider webs, known as arachnoids. And coronae, circular rings of fractures sometimes surrounded by a depression. These features are volcanic in origin. Most Venusian surface features are named after historical and mythological women. Exceptions are Maxwell Monts, named after James Clark Maxwell, and Highland Regions Alpha Regio, Beta Regio, and Ove de Regio. The last three features were named before the current system was adopted by the International Astronomical Union, the body which oversees planetary nomenclature. The longitude of physical features on Venice are expressed relative to its prime meridian. The original prime meridian passed through the radar bright spot at the center of the oval feature Eve, located south of Alpha Regio. After the Venera missions were completed, the prime meridian was redefined to pass through the central peak in the crater area in Uncedna Planitia. The stratigraphically oldest tessera terrains have consistently lower thermal emissivity than the surrounding basaltic plains measured by Venice Express and Magellan, indicating a different, possibly a more felsic, mineral assemblage. The mechanism to generate a large amount of felsic crust usually requires the presence of water ocean and plate tectonics, implying that habitable condition had existed on early Venice. However, the nature of tessera terrains is far from certain. Much of the Venusian surface appears to have been shaped by volcanic activity. Venice has several times as many volcanoes as Earth, and it has 167 large volcanoes that are over 100 kilometers 60 miles across. The only volcanic complex of this size on Earth is the Big Iceland of Hawaii. This is not because Venice is more volcanically active than Earth but because its crust is older and is not subject to the same erosion process. Earth's oceanic crust is continually recycled by subduction at the boundaries of tectonic plates and has an average age of about 100 million years, whereas the Venusian surface is estimated to be 300-600 million years old. Several lines of evidence point to ongoing volcanic activity on Venice. Sulfur dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere dropped by a factor of 10 between 1978 and 1986, jumped in 2006, and again declined tenfold. This may mean that levels had been boosted several times by large volcanic eruptions. It has also been suggested that Venusian lightning discussed below could originate from volcanic activity, i.e. volcanic lightning. In January 2020, Astronomers reported evidence that suggests that Venice is currently volcanically active, specifically the detection of olivine, a volcanic product that would weather quickly on the planet's surface. In 2008 and 2009, the first direct evidence for ongoing volcanism was observed by Venice Express, in the form of four transient localized infrared hotspots within the rift zone Ganis Chasma near the shield volcano Mate Mons. Three of the spots were observed in more than one successive orbit. These spots are thought to represent lava freshly released by volcanic eruptions. The actual temperatures are not known because the size of the hotspots could not be measured,
but are likely to have been in the 800, 1100 Kelvins, 527, 827 grad Celsius, 980, 15, 20 grad Fahrenheit range relative to a normal temperature of 740 Kelvins, 467 grad Celsius, 872 grad Fahrenheit. Almost a thousand impact craters on Venice are evenly distributed across its surface. On other cratered bodies, such as Earth and the Moon, craters show a range of states of degradation. On the Moon, degradation is caused by subsequent impacts, whereas on Earth it is caused by wind and rain erosion. On Venice, about 85 of the craters are in pristine condition. The number of craters, together with their well-preserved condition, indicates the planet underwent a global resurfacing event 300-600 million years ago, followed by a decay in volcanism. Whereas Earth's crust is in continuous motion, Venice is thought to be unable to sustain such a process. Without plate tectonics to dissipate heat from its mantle, Venice instead undergoes a cyclical process in which mantle temperatures rise until they reach a critical level that weakens the crust. Then, over a period of about 100 million years, subduction occurs on an enormous scale, completely recycling the crust. Venusian craters range from 3 to 280 kilometers to 174 miles in diameter. No craters are smaller than 3 kilometers, because of the effects of the dense atmosphere on incoming objects. Objects with less than a certain kinetic energy are slowed so much by the atmosphere that they do not create an impact crater. Incoming projectiles less than 50 meters 160 feet in diameter will fragment and burn up in the atmosphere before reaching the ground. Without seismic data or knowledge of its moment of inertia, Little direct information is available about the internal structure and geochemistry of Venice. The similarity in size and density between Venice and Earth suggests they share a similar internal structure. A core, mantle, and crust. Like that of Earth, the Venusian core is most likely at least partially liquid because the two planets have been cooling at about the same rate, although a completely solid core cannot be ruled out. The slightly smaller size of Venice means pressures are 24 lower in its deep interior than Earth's. The predicted values for the moment of inertia based on planetary models suggest a core radius of 2,903,450 2 kilometers. This is in line with the first observation-based estimate of 3,500 kilometers. The principal difference between the two planets is the lack of evidence for plate tectonics on Venice possibly because its crust is too strong to subduct without water to make it less viscous. This results in reduced heat loss from the planet, preventing it from cooling and providing a likely explanation for its lack of an internally generated magnetic field. Instead, Venice may lose its internal heat in periodic major resurfacing events. In 1967, Venera 4 found Venice's magnetic field to be much weaker than that of Earth. This magnetic field is induced by an interaction between the ionosphere and the solar wind, rather than by an internal dynamo as in the Earth's core. Venice's small induced magnetosphere provides negligible protection to the atmosphere against cosmic radiation. The lack of an intrinsic magnetic field at Venice was surprising, given that it is similar to Earth in size and was expected also to contain a dynamo at its core. A dynamo requires three things. A conducting liquid rotation and convection. The core is thought to be electrically conductive and, although its rotation is often thought to be too slow, simulations show it is adequate to produce a dynamo. This implies that the dynamo is missing because of a lack of convection in Venice's core. On Earth, Convection occurs in the liquid outer layer of the core because the bottom of the liquid layer is much higher in temperature than the top. On Venice, a global resurfacing event may have shut down plate tectonics and led to a reduced heat flux through the crust. This insulating effect would cause the mantle temperature to increase, thereby reducing the heat flux out of the core. As a result, no internal geodynamo is available to drive a magnetic field. Instead, the heat from the core is reheating the crust. 
One possibility is that Venice has no solid inner core, or that its core is not cooling, so that the entire liquid part of the core is at approximately the same temperature. Another possibility is that its core has already completely solidified. The state of the core is highly dependent on the concentration of sulfur, which is unknown at present. The weak magnetosphere around Venice means that the solar wind is interacting directly with its outer atmosphere. Here, ions of hydrogen and oxygen are being created by the dissociation of water molecules from ultraviolet radiation. The solar wind then supplies energy that gives some of these ions sufficient velocity to escape Venice's gravity field. This erosion process results in a steady loss of low-mass hydrogen, helium and oxygen ions, whereas higher-mass molecules, such as carbon dioxide, are more likely to be retained. Atmospheric erosion by the solar wind could have led to the loss of most of Venice's water during the first billion years after it formed. However, the planet may have retained a dynamo for its first to three billion years, so the water loss may have occurred more recently. The erosion has increased the ratio of higher mass deuterium to lower mass hydrogen in the atmosphere 100 times compared to the rest of the solar system. Venice orbits the Sun at an average distance of about 0 0.72 or 108 million kilometers, 67 million miles, and completes an orbit every 224.7 days. Although all planetary orbits are elliptical, Venice's orbit is currently the closest to circular, with an eccentricity of less than 0 0.1. Simulations of the early solar system orbital dynamics have shown that the eccentricity of the Venice orbit may have been substantially larger in the past, reaching values as high as 0.31 and possibly impacting the early climate evolution. The current near-circular orbit of Venice means that when Venice lies between Earth and the Sun in inferior conjunction, it makes the closest approach to Earth of any planet at an average distance of 41 million kilometers, 25 million miles. The planet reaches inferior conjunction every 584 days, on average. Because of the decreasing eccentricity of Earth's orbit, the minimum distances will become greater over tens of thousands of years. From the year 1 to 5,000, 383, there are 526 approaches less than 40 million kilometers, 25 million miles. Then, there are none for about 60,158 years. All the planets in the solar system orbit the Sun in an anticlockwise direction as viewed from above Earth's North Pole. Most planets also rotate on their axes in an anticlockwise direction. But Venice rotates clockwise in retrograde rotation once every 243 Earth days, the slowest rotation of any planet. Because its rotation is so slow, Venice is very close to spherical. A Venusian sidereal day thus lasts longer than a Venusian year 243 versus 224.7 Earth days. Venice's equator rotates at 6.52 kilometers per hour, 4.5 miles per hour whereas Earth's rotates at 1674.4 km per hour, 1040.4 miles per hour. Venice's rotation period measured with Magellan spacecraft data over a 500-day period is smaller than the rotation period measured during the 16-year period between the Magellan spacecraft and Venice Express visits, with a difference of about 6.5 minutes. Because of the retrograde rotation, the length of a solar day on Venice is significantly shorter than the sidereal day, at 116.75 Earth days making the Venusian solar day shorter than Mercury's 176 Earth days. The 116-day figure is extremely close to the average number of days it takes Mercury to slip underneath the Earth in its orbit. One Venusian year is about 1.92 Venusian solar days. To an observer on the surface of Venice, the sun would rise in the west and set in the east, although Venice's opaque clouds prevent observing the sun from the planet's surface. Venice may have formed from the solar nebula with a different rotation period and obliquity, reaching its current state 
because of chaotic spin changes caused by planetary perturbations and tidal effects on its dense atmosphere, a change that would have occurred over the course of billions of years. The rotation period of Venice may represent an equilibrium state between tidal locking to the sun's gravitation, which tends to slow rotation, and an atmospheric tide created by solar heating of the thick Venusian atmosphere. The 584-day average interval between successive close approaches to Earth is almost exactly equal to five Venusian solar days 5.1444 to be precise, but the hypothesis of a spin-orbit resonance with Earth has been discounted. Venice has no natural satellites. It has several Trojan asteroids. The quasi-satellite 2002 V68 and two other temporary Trojans, 2001 32 and 2012 Q 133. In the 17th century, Giovanni Cassini reported a moon orbiting Venice, which was named Ninth, and numerous sightings were reported over the following 200 years, but most were determined to be stars in the vicinity. Alex Alamis and David Stevenson's 2006 study of models of the early solar system at the California Institute of Technology shows Venice likely had at least one moon created by a huge impact event billions of years ago. About 10 million years later, according to the study, another impact reversed the planet's spin direction and caused the Venusian moon gradually to spiral inward until it collided with Venice. If later impacts created moons, these were removed in the same way. An alternative explanation for the lack of satellites is the effect of strong solar tides, which can destabilize large satellites or biting the inner terrestrial planets. To the naked eye, Venice appears as a white point of light brighter than any other planet or star apart from the Sun. The planet's mean apparent magnitude is 4.14 with a standard deviation of 0.31. The brightest magnitude occurs during crescent phase about one month before or after inferior conjunction. Venice fades to about magnitude 3 when it is backlit by the sun. The planet is bright enough to be seen in broad daylight, but is more easily visible when the sun is low on the horizon or setting. As an inferior planet, it always lies within about 47 of the Sun. Venice overtakes Earth every 584 days as it orbits the Sun. As it does so, it changes from the evening star, visible after sunset, to the morning star, visible before sunrise. Although Mercury, the other inferior planet, reaches a maximum elongation of only 28 and is often difficult to discern in twilight, Venice is hard to miss when it is at its brightest. Its greater maximum elongation means it is visible in dark skies long after sunset. As the brightest point-like object in the sky, Venice is a commonly misreported unidentified flying object. As it orbits the sun, Venice displays phases like those of the moon in a telescopic view. The planet appears as a small and full disk when it is on the opposite side of the Sun at superior conjunction. Venice shows a larger disk and quarter phase at its maximum elongations from the Sun, and appears its brightest in the night sky. The planet presents a much larger thin crescent in telescopic views as it passes along the near side between Earth and the Sun. Venice displays its largest size and new phase when it is between Earth and the Sun at inferior conjunction. Its atmosphere is visible through telescopes by the halo of sunlight refracted around it. The phases are clearly visible in a four telescope. The Venusian orbit is slightly inclined relative to Earth's orbit. Thus, when the planet passes between Earth and the Sun, it usually does not cross the face of the Sun. Transits of Venice occur when the planet's inferior conjunction coincides with its presence in the plane of Earth's orbit. Transits of Venice occur in cycles of 243 years, with the current pattern of transits being pairs of transits separated by 8 years, at intervals of about 105.5 years or 121.5 years a pattern first discovered in 1639 by the English astronomer Jeremia Horrocks. The latest pair was June 8, 2004 and June 5, 6, 2012, 
The transit could be watched, lived from many online outlets, or observed locally with the right equipment and conditions. The preceding pair of transits occurred in December 1874 and December 1882. The following pair will occur in December 2117 and December 2125. The 1874 transit is the subject of the oldest film known, the 1874 Passage de Venice. Historically, transits of Venice were important because they allowed astronomers to determine the size of the astronomical unit, and hence the size of the solar system as shown by Horrocks in 1639. Captain Cook's exploration of the east coast of Australia came after he had sailed to Tahiti in 1768 to observe a transit of Venice. The pentagram of Venice is the path that Venice makes as observed from Earth. Successive inferior conjunctions of Venice repeat very near a 13.8 ratio Earth orbits eight times for every 13 orbits of Venice, shifting 144 upon sequential inferior conjunctions. The 13.8 ratio is approximate. 813 is approximately 0 0.61,000. 538 while Venice orbits the Sun in 0 0.61,519 years. The pentagram of Venice is sometimes also referred to as the petals of Venice due to the path's visual similarity to a flower. Naked eye observations of Venice during daylight hours exist in several anecdotes and records. Astronomer Edmund Halley calculated its maximum naked eye brightness in 1716, when many Londoners were alarmed by its appearance in the daytime. French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte once witnessed a daytime apparition of the planet while at a reception in Luxembourg. Another historical daytime observation of the planet took place during the inauguration of the American President Abraham Lincoln in Washington, D.C., on 4 March 1865. Although naked eye visibility of Venice's phases is disputed, records exist of observations of its crescent. A long-standing mystery of Venice observations is the so-called ashen light and apparent weak illumination of its dark side, seen when the planet is in the crescent phase. The first claimed observation of ashen light was made in 1643, but the existence of the illumination has never been reliably confirmed. Observers have speculated it may result from electrical activity in the Venusian atmosphere, but it could be illusory, resulting from the physiological effect of observing a bright, crescent-shaped object. The ashen light has often been sighted when Venice is in the evening sky when the evening terminator of the planet is towards to Earth. Because the movements of Venice appear to be discontinuous, it disappears due to its proximity to the sun for many days at a time and then reappears on the other horizon. Some cultures did not recognize Venice as a single entity. Instead, they assumed it to be two separate stars on each horizon, the morning and evening star. Nonetheless, a cylinder seal from the Gemdit Nasser period and the Venice tablet of Amasagica from the first Babylonian dynasty indicate that the ancient Sumerians already knew that the morning and evening stars were the same celestial object. In the old Babylonian period, the planet Venice was known as Ninsai Anna and later as Dilbet. The name Ninsai Anna translates to Divine Lady, Illumination of Haven, which refers to Venice as the brightest visible star. Earlier spellings of the name were written with the cuneiform sign Sephor Su, meaning to be red, and the original meaning may have been Divine Lady of the Redness of Haven in reference to the color of the morning and evening sky. The Chinese historically referred to the morning Venice as the Great White Tibi, or the opener starter of brightness Kuang, and the evening Venice as the excellent West One Cheng. The ancient Greeks also initially believed Venice to be two separate stars. Phosphorus, the morning star, and Hesperus, the evening star. Pliny the Elder credited the realization that they were a single object to Pythagoras in the 6th century BC, while Diogenes Lartius argued that Parmenides was probably responsible for this discovery. Though they recognized Venice as a single object, the ancient Romans continued to designate the morning aspect of Venice as Lucifer, literally light bringer, and the evening aspect as Vesper, both of which are literal translations of their traditional Greek names. In the 2nd century, 
In his astronomical treatise Almagest, Ptolemy theorized that both Mercury and Venice are located between the Sun and the Earth. The 11th century Persian astronomer Avicenna claimed to have observed the transit of Venice, which later astronomers took as confirmation of Ptolemy's theory. In the 12th century, the Andalusian astronomer Imbaggio observed two planets as black spots on the face of the Sun, these were thought to be the transits of Venice and Mercury by 13th century Maragat astronomer Cop Alden Shirazi, though this cannot be true as there were no Venice transits in Imbaja's lifetime. When the Italian physicist Galileo Galilei first observed the planet in the early 17th century, he found it showed phases like the moon, varying from crescent to gibbous to full and vice versa. When Venice is furthest from the sun in the sky, it shows a half-lit phase, and when it is closest to the sun in the sky, it shows as a crescent or full phase. This could be possible only if Venice orbited the sun, and this was among the first observations to clearly contradict the Ptolemaic geocentric model that the solar system was concentric and centered on Earth. The 1639 transit of Venice was accurately predicted by Jeremia Horrocks and observed by him and his friend, William Crabtree at each of their respective homes, on 4 December 1639, 24 November under the Julian calendar in use at that time. The atmosphere of Venice was discovered in 1761 by Russian polymath Michael. Lomomonana discovered... Venice's atmosphere was observed in 1790 by German astronomer Johann Skurter. Skurter found when the planet was a thin crescent, the cusps extended through more than 180. He correctly surmised this was due to scattering of sunlight in a dense atmosphere. Later, American astronomer Chester Smith Lemon observed a complete ring around the dark side of the planet when it was at inferior conjunction, providing further evidence for an atmosphere. The atmosphere complicated efforts to determine a rotation period for the planet, and observers such as Italian-born astronomer Giovanni Cassini and Skurter incorrectly estimated periods of about 24 from the motions of markings on the planet's apparent surface. Little more was discovered about Venice until the 20th century. Its almost featureless disk gave no hint what its surface might be like, and it was only with the development of spectroscopic radar and ultraviolet observations that more of its secrets were revealed. The first ultraviolet observations were carried out in the 1920s, when Frank E. Ross found that ultraviolet photographs revealed considerable detail that was absent in visible and infrared radiation. He suggested this was due to a dense, yellow lower atmosphere with high cirrus clouds above it. Spectroscopic observations in the 1900s gave the first clues about the Venusian rotation. Vesta Slipher tried to measure the Doppler shift of light from Venice, but found he could not detect any rotation. He surmised the planet must have a much longer rotation period than had previously been thought. Later work in the 1950s showed the rotation was retrograde. Radar observations of Venice were first carried out in the 1960s and provided the first measurements of the rotation period, which were close to the modern value. Radar observations in the 1970s revealed details of the Venusian surface for the first time. Pulses of radio waves were beamed at the planet using the 300 meters 1,000 feet radio telescope at Arecibo Observatory, and the HOs revealed two highly reflective regions, designated the Alpha and Beta regions. The observations also revealed a bright region attributed to mountains, which was called Maxwell Mons. These three features are now the only ones on Venice that do not have female names. The first robotic space probe mission to Venice and any planet was Venera 1 of the Soviet Venera program launched in 1961, though it lost contact en route. The first successful mission to Venice as well, as the world's first successful interplanetary mission was the Mariner 2 mission by the United States, passing on 14 December 1962 at 34,833 kilometers 21,000, 
644 miles above the surface of Venice and gathering data on the planet's atmosphere. On 18 October 1967, the Soviet Venerofor successfully entered as the first to probe the atmosphere and deployed science experiments. Venerofor showed the surface temperature was hotter than Mariner 2 had calculated, at almost 500 grad Celsius, 932 grad Fahrenheit, determined that the atmosphere was 95 carbon dioxide katu, and discovered that Venice's atmosphere was considerably denser than Venerofor's designers had anticipated. The joint Venerofor Mariner 5 data were analyzed by a combined Soviet American science team in a series of colloquia over the following year in an early example of space cooperation. In 1974, Mariner 10 swung by Venice to bend its path toward Mercury and took ultraviolet photographs of the clouds, revealing the extraordinarily high wind speeds in the Venusian atmosphere. This was the first interplanetary gravity assist ever used, a technique which would be used by later probes, most notably Voyager 1 and 2. In 1975, the Soviet Venera 9 and 10 landers transmitted the first images from the surface of Venice, which were in black and white. In 1982, the first color images of the surface were obtained with the Soviet Venera 13 and 14 landers. NASA obtained additional data in 1978 with the Pioneer Venice project that consisted of two separate missions, Pioneer Venice Orbiter and Pioneer Venice Multiprobe. The successful Soviet Venera program came to a close in October 1983, when Venera 15 and 16 were placed in orbit to conduct detailed mapping of 25 of Venice terrain from the North Pole to 13 latitudes. Several other missions explored Venice in the 1980s and 1990s, including Vega 1 1985, Vega 2 1985, Galileo 1990, Magellan 1994. Cassini Huygens 1998, and, and Messenger 2006. All except Magellan were gravity assists. Then, Venice Express by the European Space Agency ESA entered orbit around Venice in April 2006. Equipped with seven scientific instruments, Venice Express provided unprecedented long-term observation of Venice's atmosphere. ESA concluded the Venice Express mission in December 2014. As of 2020, Japan's Akatsukai is in a highly eccentric orbit around Venice since 7 December 2015, and there are several probing proposals under study by Roscosmos, NASA, ISRO, ESA, and the private sector eGrams by Rocket Lab. Venice is a primary feature of the night sky and so has been of remarkable importance in mythology astrology and fiction throughout history and in different cultures. In Sumerian religion, Inanna was associated with the planet Venice. Several hymns praise Inanna in her role as the goddess of the planet Venice. Theology professor Jeffrey Cooley has argued that, in many myths, Inanna's movements may correspond with the movements of the planet Venice in the sky. The discontinuous movements of Venice relate to both mythology as well as Inanna's dual nature. In Inanna's descent to the underworld, unlike any other deity, Inanna is able to descend into the netherworld and return to the havens. The planet Venice appears to make a similar descent, setting in the west and then rising again in the east. An introductory hymn describes Inanna leaving the havens and hating for Kerr, what could be presumed to be the mountains replicating the rising and setting of Inanna to the west. In Inanna and Shukalatuda, and Inanna's descent into the underworld appear to parallel the motion of the planet Venice. In Inanna and Shukalatuda, Shukalatuda is described as scanning the havens in search of Inanna, possibly searching the eastern and western horizons. In the same myth, while searching for her attacker, Inanna herself makes several movements that correspond with the movements of Venice in the sky. Classical poets such as Homer, Sappho, Ovid, and Virgil spoke of the star and its light. Poets such as William Blake, Robert Frost, Letitia Elizabeth Landon, 
Alfred Lord Tennyson, and William Wordsworth wrote odes to it. In Chinese, the planet is called Jink Feng, the golden planet of the metal element. In India, Shukra Gray of the planet Shukra is named after the powerful Saint Shukra. Shukra, which is used in Indian Vedic astrology, means clear, pure or brightness, clearness in Sanskrit. One of the nine Navagraha, it is held to affect wealth, pleasure and reproduction. It was the son of Borgu, preceptor of the Deities, and guru of the Asheras. The word Shukra is also associated with semen or generation. Venice is known as Kejora in Indonesian and Malaysian Malay. Modern Chinese, Japanese, and Korean cultures refer to the planet literally as the metal star based on the five elements. The Maya considered Venice to be the most important celestial body after the sun and moon. They called it Chak Ek, or No Ek, the great star. The cycles of Venice were important to their calendar and were described in some of their books, such as Maya Codex of Mexico and Dresden Codex. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks believed Venice to be two separate bodies, a morning star and an evening star. The Egyptians knew the morning star as Chimituri and the evening star as Uweti. The Greeks used the names Phosphoros, meaning light bringer whence the element Phosphorus, alternately Sporos, meaning dawn bringer, for the morning star, and Hesperos, meaning western one, for the evening star. Though by the Roman era they were recognized as one celestial object, known as the Star of Venice, the traditional to Greek names continued to be used, though usually translated to Latin as El Cipher and Vesper. With the invention of the telescope, the idea that Venice was a physical world and possible destination began to take form. The impenetrable Venusian cloud cover gave science fiction writers free reign to speculate on conditions at its surface, all the more so when early observations showed that not only was it similar in size to Earth, it possessed a substantial atmosphere. Closer to the sun than Earth, the planet was frequently depicted as warmer, but still habitable by humans. The genera reached its peak between the 1930s and 1950s, at a time when science had revealed some aspects of Venice, but not yet the harsh reality of its surface conditions. Findings from the first missions to Venice showed the reality to be quite different and brought this particular genre to an end. As scientific knowledge of Venice advanced, science fiction authors tried to keep pace, particularly by conjecturing human attempts to terraform Venice. The astronomical symbol for Venice is the same as that used in biology for the female sex. A circle with a small cross beneath. The Venice symbol also represents femininity and in Western alchemy stood for the metal copper. Polished copper has been used for mirrors from antiquity, and the symbol for Venice has sometimes been understood to stand for the mirror of the goddess, although that is unlikely to be its true origin. In the Greek Oxyrhynchus papyri, the symbols for Venice and Mercury didn't have the crossbar on the bottom stroke. Speculation on the possibility of life on Venice's surface decreased significantly after the early 1960s when it became clear that the conditions are extreme compared to those on Earth. Venice's extreme temperature and atmospheric pressure make water-based life as currently known unlikely. Some scientists have speculated that the moacidophilic extremophile microorganisms might exist in the cooler, acidic upper layers of the Venusian atmosphere. Such speculations go back to 1967, when Carl Sagan and Harold J. Morowitz suggested in a Nature article that tiny objects detected in Venice's clouds might be organisms similar to Earth's bacteria which are of approximately the same size. In August 2019, astronomers led by Yun Ju Lee reported that long-term pattern of absorbance and albedo changes in the atmosphere of the planet Venice caused by unknown absorbers, which may be chemicals or even large colonies of microorganisms high up in the atmosphere of the planet, affect the climate. Their light absorbance is almost identical to that of microorganisms in Earth's clouds. Similar conclusions have been reached by other studies. In September 2020, 
a team of astronomers led by Jane Greaves from Cardiff University announced the likely detection of phosphine, a gas not known to be produced by any known chemical processes on the Venusian surface or atmosphere, in the upper levels of the planet's clouds. One proposed source for this phosphine is living organisms. The phosphine was detected at heights of at least 30 miles above the surface, and primarily at mid-latitudes with none detected at the poles. The discovery prompted NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine to publicly call for a new focus on the study of Venice, describing the phosphine find as the most significant development yet in building the case for life off Earth. Subsequent analysis of the data processing used to identify phosphine in the atmosphere of Venice has raised concerns that the detection line may be an artifact. The use of a 12th order polynomial fit may have amplified noise and generated a false reading C. Runge's phenomenon. Observations of the atmosphere of Venice at other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum in which a phosphine absorption line would be expected did not detect phosphine. By late October 2020, reanalysis of data with a proper subtraction of background did not show a statistically significant detection of phosphine. The Committee on Space Research is a scientific organization established by the International Council for Science. Among their responsibilities is the development of recommendations for avoiding interplanetary contamination. For this purpose, space missions are categorized into five groups. Due to the harsh surface environment of Venice, Venice has been under the Planetary Protection Category 2. This indicates that there is only a remote chance that spacecraft-borne contamination could compromise investigations. Venice is the place of the very first interplanetary human presence, mediated through robotic missions, with the first successful landings on another planet and extraterrestrial body other than the Moon. Venice was at the beginning of the space age frequently visited by space probes until the 1990s. Currently in orbit is Akatsuki, and the Parker Solar Probe routinely uses Venice for gravity assist maneuvers. The only nation that has sent lander probes to the surface of Venice has been the Soviet Union, which has been used by Russian officials to call Venice a Russian planet. While the surface conditions of Venice are very inhospitable, the atmospheric pressure and temperature 50 kilometers above the surface are similar to those at Earth's surface. With this in mind, the Soviet engineer Sergei Shitomirsky 1929 to 2004 and 1971, and more contemporarily NASA aerospace engineer Geoffrey A. Landis in 2003 suggested the use of aerostats for crude exploration and possibly for permanent floating cities in the Venusian atmosphere, an alternative to the popular idea of living on planetary surfaces such as Mars. Among the many engineering challenges for any human presence in the atmosphere of Venice are the corrosive amounts of sulfuric acid in the atmosphere. The High Altitude Venice Operational Concept Havoc by NASA is a mission concept that proposed a crude aerostat design. 